This video is going to show you how you can do a paired samples t-test in R. I'll show you how you can get a flex size for it as well, and show you an example using two different formats of data, wide form and long form data. As ever, the data sets and the code are available in the link below this video. So let's run through the first example. So we're reading our data and we're going to do it for wide form data. So our data set is paired t-test WF, WF just for wide form. We'll call this one the F1. So we'll run that. Let's take a look. So here's our data. We've got our participant and we've got 40 participants. And then we've got these variables, say before and after. And the numbers in this column refer to sadness. And the example this is based on is from some very sad news for me anyway today that Jurgen Klopp is going to be standing down as manager of Liverpool Football Club at the end of the season which obviously has made me as a Liverpool fan very sad indeed. So in this data, what we did, we asked Liverpool fans how sad they were on a 1 to 9 scale. Then we told them the news that Jurgen Klopp is going to stand down at the end of the season. And then we asked them how sad they were again. So we've got before and after. So before they heard the news and after they heard the news, we want to compare these two columns. To do that is really straightforward. We use our t.test command and then we simply say our after variable, comma, before variable. And then we say paired equals true. So that's all we need to do. We run that. It gives us our t test. We got a t statistic, a degrees of freedom, and a p value for it. We get confidence intervals as well, and they refer to the mean difference between our two conditions. Now, if we want to know whether before or after scores are higher, we can just ask for the mean for before. So 3.85, mean for after, 5.175. So as you can see, our participants are much sadder after hearing the news than they were before. We can also get an effect size for this difference. So to get our effect size, we just use our size package. If you haven't installed that, you'll need to. But we do need to get that out of our library. Then we simply say Cohen's.d and look at that, it's exactly the same command as we use for the t test as well. After, before, paired equals true. And there we go, we get our Cohen's d. So we can write our t test up. So we can give our t statistic along with the degrees of freedom, our p value, and then our Cohen's d. As you can see here as well, as well as giving us the Cohen's d, it says it's a large effect. And it gives us confidence intervals for this effect size as well. So we've done a comprehensive write up of everything there. Now, sometimes our data is in a different format. So let's look at long form example. So this is just paired samples t test LF for long form. I call this one DF2. So let's view that data. So it's exactly the same data, except it's differently formatted. So you can see participants now appears twice. We have the sadness score. And now we have time, time one, which is before, and time two, which is after. So this is the same data as before, but I've just put it in a different format. The first thing we can do, we don't strictly need to do this, and I'll show you um, why I do do it in a minute, is we can label time as our factor. So we just do our normal way we label factors, so levels are one and two, and the labels are before and after. If you run that, you can now see we've got before, and after clearly labeled. So our t-test is done in a slightly different manner. So we've got our dependent variable of sadness, then tilde time, so predicted by time. We say paired equals true. So you run that, and there we go. We get the same results as before. The only difference is we get a minus here. That minus isn't particularly relevant. If I'd coded after as one and before as two, it would be a positive number. It's just the way it's been coded. It's not particularly relevant at all. And the write-ups are exactly the same. The statistics are the same. Cohen's D, again, it's the same command as we use in t-test. Sadness, tilde, time, paired equals two. There we go. So we've got our fact size again. Again, we can ignore that minus. Again, we could just look at the means and conditions for another way of working out um, which of our um, bef whether before and after have greater sadness scores, we could just do a box plot. Again, box plot is the same command as here. We've got the same command for our box plot. 
and here's our box plot. So as you can see, the four scores are on average lower than four after. So there we go. So that's just two ways that we can produce t-test and Cohen's D depending upon the format of your data. Now, you don't have to do this labeling. So if I read that in again, without labeling it, it will produce us a t-test, gives us the same t-test results. The only difference is, is the Cohen's D gives us a warning. Basically, it's saying, oh, I've had to create this time variable. I've had to make that a factor for this to work. So we get a warning message, but the results don't change. It's not a problem for our data, but it's a bit neater to have things neatly labeled.